Hey, what is up, guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Brave Nine video. All right, today we're gonna do something different. We're gonna talk about the Jump Start Quest. Okay, so many of you guys have been asking me to do an updated guide for the Jump Start Quest. So hopefully in this video, I'll be able to provide you guys uh, hopefully an up to date and more accurate guides on who to pick compared to what I've done previously in the past because those things are kind of outdated at the point of the time of me recording this video. Now before we begin, I do want to put a disclaimer though that make sure you guys are aware of the date of the videos and constantly check for updated guides on my channel. Alright, so the best way to do this is just to subscribe, turn on the notifications. That way whenever I post a video, you guys are going to get notified immediately. Most of the time, whenever players tend to check my guides, they tend to go to the older ones. I have no idea why. But I actually try my best to basically uh, link the newer ones in the description or somewhere in the comments if I can ever find it. Okay, so let's jump into it right now. Okay, let's start off by discussing about the units that you can obtain in Jumpstart Quest 1. Alright, we're going to start off with all the 5 stars first. Maybe we'll just do it this way. We're going to go through all the 5 stars from Jumpstart Quest 1 and 2 combined. So they are a total of uh, 4. The Warriors, Supporters, Defenders will be available in Jumpstart Quest 1 for the 5 stars. And Jumpstart Quest 2 will introduce 5 star Magicians. Alright, we're going to talk about 5 star Warriors for now. Okay, so you have a couple of options right here. So, Anastasia, Wilhelmina, Dalvi, Foxy, Ilenia, Sigmund, Hanya, Jin, Christina, and Elijah. Now, it's very obvious who you should pick. Uh, if you guys are not up to date in the meta, the most recently released warrior is Jin. Before him is Ilenia. So these two are probably going to be the best, uh, the safest one, I would say, because they have been pretty strong in the meta currently. So Dalvi and Christina, they both do have companions. They, do, they both do have the ability to reach plus 15 but they have fallen off the meta ever since their release. So those are the only four warriors that have plus 15 compared to all the other warriors which can only reach plus 10 maximum. Okay, so I would not recommend picking Dalvi or Christina at all at this point. So in my opinion, between Ilenia or Jin, who do I think is a much better pick? I'm going to vote for Ilenia, uh, not because she's waifu and stuff, but obviously it's because they are both, I would say, equally good but Ilenia is going to need the skill level much more than a Jin. Alright, so if you guys are not familiar with Jin's skills, he can pretty much do what he does at low skill level. Plus 0, plus 1, plus 2. He can counter the enemy just fine. Alright, if you guys want to know what his skills does, I've done an analysis on that. So feel free to check it out. But yeah, Ilenia is going to need that skill level much more than Jin. So once Ilenia reaches plus 12, plus 13, plus 14, plus 15, her damage scaling it's going to be super high, alright? Whereas Jin from 0 to plus 12 doesn't really do much, but once he reaches plus 12, it's going to be slightly better, and plus 15, he's going to be able to negate multi-hit stuff. But in most cases, I would say pick Elena and build Jin from the scratch, alright? Building Jin from the scratch is going to make much more sense. Like I mentioned, he can be used at low skill level. So having a strong start with Elena is going to help you significantly. Alright, so now let's move on to the 5 star defenders. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, we have Cecilia, Kaoli, Glacia, and Kaylin. So these 4 units are the ones that have the plus 15 variants. Again, if they don't have plus 15 yet, that means that they will have their rework companions in the future. Uh, we can only hope for, for that, but at the time of me recording this video, these 4 are probably the strongest ones out of this list right here. Now. Glacia is really complicated. Uh, she has fallen off the meta ever since Bane came, came in, right? So she really needs plus 15 as well. I've never, I was never a big fan of her, her design or her recommendation to new players. Now, if you are uh, an intermediate or veteran player, you want to build Glacia, sure. But for new players to start building Glacia on the get go, it's going to be really difficult. To get her to plus 15, new players, uh, if you are new, you might not know this, but to get a unit to plus 15, you're going to need 5 companions. Now that's the easy one. Believe me or not, that's the easy one. Companions are the easy one. If you get lucky, you get lucky, you can get them easily. But soul gears, now that's the tough one. If you don't have enough resources to pull for soul gear or try to get the mileage ones, uh, it's going to be very randomized. So whatever soul gears that you get, you can't choose 
uh, what you want to get ideally unless you have the mileage selector for soul gear that doesn't come as often as getting a companion so unfortunately i'm not going to recommend glacia to any new players at all so it's going to be between kaylin and Kauli. now this is a complicated one Kauli is very good in pve whereas we have kaylin which she's also a solid choice all right she is going to be better than Kauli at pvp but if you are new to the game and if you are referring to this guy of course i'm assuming you are new so i do think that Kauli is going to serve you much better overall in terms of the world boss pve evil castle i do get to use Kauli from time to time in the gate of chaos as well if you want to tackle that all right so i'm going to make a separate video talking about this but if i have if i were to start a new account what i would do is i would pick Kauli, right and then i would build bane from the scratch Bane is just so good. Pick Kauli and build Bane because you're going to need Kauli, right? You're going to need Kauli for world boss, all the transport world bosses. Kauli has the highest HP of all the 5 star mercenaries out there. Alright, Cecilia is good, but you don't really need plus 9 on her. So I'm going to vote for Kauli this one. Kaylin on the second one and third Cecilia. Okay, now we have the 5 star supporters for Jumpstart Quest 1. So this is going to be pretty straightforward all right uh, in terms of plus 15 all right the only unit that has plus 15 from from the list right here is Michaela, floria and veronia now all of the other ones that i did not mention they have yet to receive their companions for sure they are going to be stronger in the future but the strongest one of this list right now at the time of me recording this video is veronia you're going to get a lot of usage out of her for sure all right i wouldn't recommend beginners to pick floria Floria is very complicated. Uh, she is a supporter. They basically boost your HP and that's about it. She boosts your HP. Ideally, when you you pick a supporter, you want the supporter to basically give you the ability to boost attack, crit rate, crit damage, to basically help your warriors deal immense amount of damage. Having Veronia gives you the flexibility to build other warriors down the line. All right, for example, like Gunter right now. He actually really needs Veronia, right? So, and then you can perhaps if you ever consider to build an Alec, you're gonna have that option as well because if you don't have Veronia, you're gonna need, you might need to build her later and trust me, I've seen many players regret for not picking Veronia from the Jumpstart quest, all right? They, whether it's from the Evil Castle uh, comments or the Gate of Chaos comments, I've seen at least two to three people every time saying that, oh my god, I wish I, I built a Veronia. So yeah, so trust me, build Veronia, you will not regret it. You will definitely have some sort of use for her for sure. In PvE, in PvP, plenty of scenarios where you can take advantage of her. Okay, so I'm done with warriors, supporters, defenders. Now, now let's jump onto the magicians. So you will only get this from Jumpstart Quest 2, all right? So this is not from Jumpstart Quest 1. You have options between Eldora, Frisha, Catherine, I, Lillian, Edwin, Velter, Wester, Hijin, and Garinov. Okay, so this one is going to be super obvious. Pick Velter, alright? There's just no excuse. There's just no reason for you not to. Velter is the highest HP magicians in, on this list, and he's probably the longest reigning magician in the meta for 5 star, alright? Like, I'm not even kidding. Velter was released on April, right? Somewhere around April. And now at the time of me recording this video is September. That's almost six months that he's dominating in the arena. And he's not even close to dropping off yet. Plenty of players are still using him. He's just insane. So I, I can confidently say that he's going to be safe throughout the year, all right, until the end of 2020. So in my opinion, Velter is going to be the one. Catherine has fallen off the meta. So Catherine and Velter are the only two that has the option to go up to plus 15 with companions. Oh, Frisha as well. Yes. Now Frisha is going to be a bit complicated. Uh, she's going to be very niche and she fits in certain formations only. But in most cases, you can substitute her more easily than you can substitute a Velter. So Velter is just insanely good. I would say Frisha is a close second. All right. I would prioritize picking Velter if you really don't like his design you hate his looks, whatever reason, then pick Frisha. All right, the third one on the list, I would say probably I. I mean, I would say before this, I would say Eldora, but because in the Gate of Chaos, considering how useful I was, I'm going to say you're going to get a lot of usage out of I for sure in a lot of PvE contents. 
So yeah, that's my choices. Velter first, Frisha second. The third would be either I or Eldora. I would say they are pretty close, but I would favor towards I in that in that sense. Okay, so now let's jump on to the 4-star warriors for the jump start quest. We have a couple of options right here. Again, same concept applies. You ideally want to pick units that already have plus 15 because they are the strongest version of themselves. Those units that do not have the ability to reach there, uh, they will have that in the future. But right now, in this list, okay, it's very obvious. Out of all of these, Rydal, Yunrung, and Nia. Okay, only these three units have companions so far. You know what, I'm gonna say go for Rydal. I have been playing Novice Arena and constantly in Grandmaster rank for the last uh, two to three months. I've never seen anyone use Yunrung and Nia, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe with the inclusion or the modification of the Novice Arena in the future, when we get more uh, four stars coming in, right? But yeah, uh, Rydal is just something that you're gonna see much more often. And she's gonna be really, really strong in Evil Castle, in the Gate of Chaos, and in a lot of PvE stages for sure, more than Yunrung. I'm not saying that Yunrung is useless. I would say she's a close second, but her usefulness does not come close to a Rydal. So out of this list, I would say Rydal should be your first priority, followed by Yunrung. Alright, third, you'll be surprised. I won't even recommend Nia. Nia is just, she has fallen off hard. Third on this list, I would say Koret. You're gonna get much more usage out of Koret. Uh, maybe Koret or Zakan. These two are tight. So I'm gonna go for one of those. Okay, so and maybe Vyla shortly after and Nia at 5th or 6th place. So let's move on to the defenders. And this is gonna be pretty interesting. Again, who has plus 15 right here? We have Iris with plus 15, we have Renee with plus 15, and that's about it. You know what? Pick Iris. No question right here. Pick Iris, you're not gonna regret it. She's gonna, she's just insanely good. Uh, a lot of players don't really know this, but she's pretty good in regular arena as well. Yes, regular arena. I actually fought a couple of guys that use Iris in world arena. You'd be surprised. Like, her charm is just insanely good, all right? Skip, charm, hit five units, okay? Um, yeah, Rene is like not even close compared to her. Ah, I would say pick Iris for sure. Uh, in terms of second, I'm gonna say Denarisa, right? Because Denarisa is gonna be widely used in a lot of stages, in a lot of PvE and PvP stages. Iris and Denarisa, and the third one, I'm gonna say Grace. Because Grace is gonna be very unique. No other units can do what Grace does in terms of trying to nullify Taunt. Alright, so until another unit be released in the future and get that ability as well, Grace will always have that, that top pick recommendation from me. Next up, we have 4 star Magicians from Jumpstart Quest 1. Okay, so you have a couple of options Chalco, Magnus, Hell, Charlotte, Autologic, Leah, Kyle, Nayus, Zarka, Esther. Now, I did mention that ideally you want to pick plus 15 units from the Jumpstart Quest, and in this list, only Esther has the ability to plus 15. Her usefulness won't be as close as picking Hell. I would say Hell is going to serve you way much more, alright, in terms of trying to um, tackle the PvE stages. I would say maybe pick, maybe you'll build Esther later. Uh, Esther is still good in World Boss and stuff, but Hell's usefulness is just top notch. Alright, you won't regret picking Hell at all. Definitely, if this is Jumpstart Quest 1 for you, pick Hell. Alright, there's just no question right here. Okay, so 4 star supporters. This is going to be pretty obvious. Who should you pick? Plus 15 will be between Serendia and Ebony. Now, both of them have their own pros and cons. Uh, Serendia is going to need plus 15 for that bonus range. She does not give crit Wait, crit damage. She doesn't give crit damage. She gives attack. She gives a uh, crit rate, but she doesn't give crit damage, which is a huge bummer right there. Whereas Ebony, on the other hand, she gives a little bit of everything. She gives attack. She gives a bit of crit rate. She gives a bit of crit damage, and she does give you immunity as well. So purification over immunity is going to be a complicated one, but I'm gonna go for Ebony. Just because I'm going to recommend you guys to pick Rafitia later on, alright? And Ebony gives immunity. So you don't really need another purification unit. 
So I would say Ebony should be the first pick and Serendia would be the close second. Okay, so with that being said, now that we are officially done from all of the Jumpstart Quest 1, 5 star and 4 star, so let's jump into the 6 devil guide. Who should you pick? Between Alec, Rafitia, Angelica, Gran, and Natus. Please pick Rafitia, man. If you want to make your life easier, please. I know some of you guys are here for the waifus, and you look at Gran, you look at Angelica, you'll be like, hmm, very good waifu. I mean, compared to her, which is like, she's like a lolly. I totally get it. But you will not regret picking Rafitia. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Trust me, I've met a lot of players that tell me they regret for not picking Rafitia. Alright, immediately after they pick whatever, back then some of them picked Nata, some of them picked Alec. A lot of them ended up building Rafitia anyways afterwards. So why do you why do you want to enter that state of suffering to not have the Rafitia to end up building her later anyways? Alright? So like almost every account out there that you see will have a Rafitia. So just there's just no <laughs> there's just no argument right here. Okay? So Rafitia should be the best pick right here, the most solid pick. Now Alec and Angelica is going to be, I wouldn't say close, like far off second. They will be the second pick for sure, uh, depending on who do you like more. Angelica has much more defensive capabilities, 100% defense and stuff, whereas Alec has more offensive cap capabilities to hit 3 tiles and direct damage, ETC. But I would say, please don't pick anyone else except for Rafitia if you don't have her. Even if you have her, consider picking her because you're just getting her straight up at plus 9. The only thing that you need to worry about is getting two companions and one and complete her soul gears later on just to get her to plus 12 and then you're good with her. She's gonna be so good, she's gonna carry you everywhere. You're gonna be able to tackle almost every single contents out there faster, alright, just because you have Rafitia. Like your account is just gonna be significantly boosted and once you have, you know, a solid foundation of your own formation, then you can consider building another 6 devils from the scratch. But for now, please do pick Rafitia. Okay, so let's jump onto the Jumpstart Quest 2. Alright, we have a couple of options. Let's go to the 4 star uh, warriors. Okay, so this is going to be straight out obvious. I did ask you guys to pick Rydal from the Jumpstart Quest 1. So, your other options right here would be between Cry, Koret, Zakan, and Lien. Okay, so it's quite complicated. I'm gonna say pick Koret and Lien. Alright, so you're gonna get this on day 2 and day 6 from Jumpstart Quest 2. So day 2 maybe you'll pick Koret and day 6 maybe you'll pick Lien. Now, these two are going to help you immensely in PvE. Now Koret is basically a, a nerf down version of a Gunter, but she's gonna be able to do almost everything that Gunter does with proper buffs, which is why I asked you guys to pick Veronia again. Uh, in most cases, whatever situation that you see players using Gunter, most of the time, you will be able to use Koret as well. Of, of course, unless that Gunter is plus 15 and he can deal fixed damage and stuff. But I'm going to vote for Koret and Lien. Now, Cry used to be really, really strong, but he has fallen off significantly hard right now. And as a new player, PvE is going to be a concern, alright? And Cry in PvP is just... It's just average, at most average right now. I do prefer Rydal over him any time of the day. Okay, so now we're gonna check out the 4 star defenders for day 3 and day 7. Okay, so I did say pick Iris during the Jumpstart Quest 1. For this particular one on day 3, please pick Mora. Alright, Mora's usefulness is just insane. Mora is gonna act as a warrior as well. She deals insane amount of damage. If you can get her to plus 15, you're not going to regret picking her. Like, she's pretty solid in Novice right now, alongside with Iris. You can just pair them up together, and they're going to be that duo. They basically destroy everyone. And for day 7, Belastia is going to be your other option. I would say she's a pretty solid one, but I would say work on Mora first, and then you can work on Belastia later on. Alright, so for 4-star Magicians, you will not have the option to build to pick Shulman from the previous Jumpstart quest. I did say pick Hell on the first one, so pick Showman for this one, you won't regret it. Alright, Showman is insane. You might have seen Showman being used in, you know, regular arena or even world arena. He has the ability to destroy a freaking plus 15 Grand Hill there, alright? So there's just no argument right here. Anyone that has, does not have 100% defense, this guy probably can destroy them. And lastly, 
we have come here to the four star supporters. Now I did say pick Ebony in the Gemstar Quest 1. So you're going to have one more option right here. And it's going to tie down between Serendia and Isabel. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a quite, quite complicated. But Serendia is going to be more expensive overall. All right, if you're talking about getting their usefulness up because she really needs that range. And to get that range, you need plus 15. And of course, she is a four star though. So getting to plus 15 is going to be much easier. But compared to Isabel, which you can have her at plus 14, you don't really need to rush her soul gears. I feel like Isabel is much more budget friendly and much more beginner friendly. So I'm going to vote for Isabel right here. Okay, so we are on to the last pick for the Jumpstart Quest 2, which is Legendary. Okay, please, no matter what you do, pick Seto, okay? So, Seto is still dominant in the arena right now. He's still dominant. He's just insane. Uh, he's good everywhere. Whereas Belliaf is like super niche and will only be used in like one or two stages of the evil castle. I have a Belliaf. You know, I basically pick Belliaf for 1,500 ancient coins. There's a reason why she's still plus zero on my end. That speaks a lot for itself. So no matter what you do, please do not pick Belliaf. If you really want her, you can build her from the scratch later on. But Seto is just too good to pass on. If you can get Seto to plus 12, your life is going to be a lot more easier. If you're a meso cheese or whatever, you like to make your life difficult, then sure, go the other way around. But for any normal human beings, please pick Seto. Unless you have like the utmost skeleton fetish or whatever, there's no reason to pick Belia. Like really, like this is just something that you really have to do right. For the legendaries especially, Rafitia and Seto, very important. It's going to give you a strong head start in the game. So yes, that pretty much concludes all the jump start quest picks, you know. Uh, hopefully you guys make the right choices. I know uh, when it comes to jump start quest, you have to try to do research on which one will be the best one for you. Hopefully this video basically, you know, save you some time in doing those things. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications as well. Any questions, head over to the Discord. Links will be in the description below. You can follow me on Facebook as well. As always, have a nice day. Goodbye.